Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 18 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to offer you some suggestions on how to export your images. You know, I get a lot of questions from folks. They're a little confused about the export dialog in Lightroom, mainly because there's so many options. Well, Today I'm going to export this image in Niagara Falls. I think I took this this past Saturday. And I'm going to show you why I choose the settings I choose. And hopefully this will help you when you export your images. Now, I'm sure most of you know that the export dialog is in the file menu and it's right here. And you also can get to it by hitting Shift Command E if you have a Mac or Shift Control E if you have a PC and it will bring you to the export dialog. Now, the first thing we deal with right at the top here is the export location. I always export my images to the desktop. The reason for that is that I'm usually exporting for one of two reasons. I'm either going to create a file that I'm going to send to Facebook, 500px, Flickr, Twitter, something like that, or I'm creating an image that I'm going to send to a lab to be printed. Once I do any of that, when I'm done with that, I just delete that JPEG that I exported to my desktop. I don't keep it. A lot of folks will ask me, should I keep it in a different folder? Or should I re-import it into Lightroom? Or what should I do? I wouldn't do any of that. You're just wasting disk space. You already have the image in Lightroom. And it doesn't matter if you shoot JPEG or RAW, the image is in Lightroom. If you, two years from now, ten years from now, if you need a JPEG of that image again, you could just export it again. And why waste the disk space? I do recommend that you back up your Lightroom library at least twice. I have mine on a on the um, on two different external drives and in the cloud. So if I have a drive uh, problem, I don't lose my library. The library contains my digital negatives, and those are the most important thing. And I don't care about that. JPEG I exported. I'll delete that when I'm done with it. And if I need another one, I'll just export it again down the line. So that's why I do it that way. I um, choose a new name for the exported file and I give it something that relates to the file. In this case, it's Niagara Falls Custom Settings, rename to Custom Settings, Niagara Falls. And we're going to do a start number one. If I was exporting more than one, it would incrementally number the exports. So in this case, we're just exporting one image. All right, now this part is where it starts getting important. File settings. Now we're going to export to a JPEG because that's what Facebook, I mean Facebook, you could export a TIFF or a DNG to Facebook if you want, but export JPEG. That's smaller size and it has great image quality. Um, you're going to uh, export to Flickr and stuff like that too. Always export JPEG. Color space sRGB. I always use sRGB because the labs, every lab that I know of, wants the color space to be sRGB. It's just kind of standard in the in industry. So export to sRGB. I think my camera is set to Adobe RGB or um, Profoto RGB. It doesn't matter what your camera is set to. Export it to sRGB and, and you'll be fine with the print labs and it will work. everything will work out great. Quality 100. I always have quality at 100. I never limit the file size. The only time you might have to limit file size is if you're uploading to a site and the image cannot be bigger than, let's say, 2 megabytes, something like that. Then you would have to limit the file size. But otherwise, don't. Quality 100. Do not limit file size. Now, this is the tricky part that trips a lot of people up. The only time I click resize to fit is if I'm going to send an image in email because you send a lot of big e uh, pictures in email, a lot of email clients won't handle it, uh, websites won't handle it, uh, or I sh email servers won't handle it. So what I'll do for email only is I'll click resize to fit long edge 900 pixels, resolution 72 pixels per inch. That's for email only. Otherwise, I unclick that box. I send the whole humongous image to Facebook, to Flickr, to Twitter. The reason is they're going to resize it anyway. So no matter what you resize it to, they're going to resize it to fit their website, their format. So 
don't click resize to fit. That's my recommendation unless you're sending it an email. Then in email, use long edge at 900 pixels. Otherwise, I don't click this. Now resolution, I do two, one of two different things. If I'm uploading to Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, which is the three places I normally will upload, I will um, put a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. That is more than good enough uh, for a CRT or LCD screen resolution. For someone to look at it on their computer, 72 pixels per inch looks beautiful. Anything more than that won't make any difference. So 72 pixels per inch. Now, if I'm going to upload it to a lab to be printed, I use 300 pixels per inch. I also will use 300 pixels per inch for 500 PX and for, um, uh, there's another, uh, any, I can't remember, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, there's a Something America website where they will sell your images and someone will buy them as a print. In that case, I'll use 300 pixels per inch. Fine Art America, that's the name of the other one. Sorry about that. So 500 PX and Fine Art America and a, a lab, I will use 300 pixels per inch because that is a great resolution for printing. It will look beautiful. So in most cases though, for most websites, 72 pixels per inch is more than good enough. I always sharpen for screen standard. I never choose anything else. You could, if you're printing it yourself, you might want to use matte paper or glossy paper depending on what your uh, printing uh, material is. But always, even if I'm sending it to a lab, I'm going to sharpen for screen standard. They'll take care of the rest. And trust me, it looks great when you do it that way. So sharpen for screen standard. I'm going to include all metadata and I usually click remove location info because it will have my house address uh, embedded in the metadata and typically you don't want that if someone will you know people will find out where you live and there's a lot of creeps out there so I will remove my location info the metadata still contains all the camera info it will still contain my copyright and my name and stuff like that but I just remove the the coordinates of where I took the the image and it removes my address if I had it in there. I never watermark my image or I should say I rarely ever watermark my images. If you do that's a personal choice just click that box and after export I do nothing. So really the main thing that I want to communicate today are these two boxes the file settings and image sizing. I always export to JPEG I use the sRGB color space. I use 100 on quality. I never limit the file size. I rarely ever resize to fit, only for email. And I use 72 pixels per inch for any websites where it's just going to display my image. I use 300 pixels per inch for a print lab or for a website where they're selling my work and it will be printed when they sell it. So that's it. And then I click export. Now again, it will export and it's going to ding real loud. It's going to export it to my desktop and when it's on my desktop um, I will then upload it to wherever I need to upload it and then I'll delete it when I'm done. All right. If you have any questions leave the questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'd like to thank everyone that watches all my videos. Thank you very much and if you guys have time and you haven't done so already please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. That's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.